This is the Samsung Galaxy M53 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the plastic back plate. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. At this point, there are 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Next, there's a plastic cover covering the connector for the fingerprint sensor, which needs to be removed. Now that flex cable can be disconnected. A plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen, and then ran along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing is also made of plastic. There are numerous antenna flex cables on the back housing. Taking a look at the other side, there's more antenna flex cables on top, and there's a layer of graphite to help transfer heat. The speaker assembly is located on the bottom of the back housing. Here's a better look at that. And there's a mesh filter over the opening. The speaker also has those little white foam balls. Now the battery cable needs to be disconnected. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right of the board that need to be disconnected by just popping them off. Now the front facing camera can be removed. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding on the main board that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board, there's an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 108 megapixel primary lens, and a 2 megapixel macro and depth lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. Also, the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. The LED flash is located here, and there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back, as well as a secondary microphone and the proximity sensor next to it. There's also a graphite pad on the back shields to help transfer heat. When the graphite pad is peeled back, we can see thermal pads which sit on the processor and the ship over here. Now the flex cable for the screen and the two other ends of the coaxial cable need to be disconnected from the subboard. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, as well as the screws on the back housing and remove the back housing itself. At that point, you'd be able to disconnect the flex cable for the screen, and then you would have to heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble your phone. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard that needs to be removed. Now that subboard can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at the subboard, and there's a rubber gasket around the screen connector. The primary microphone is located on the other side, and the charger port is located next to it. In order to remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry it off, so we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery is removed and this film is peeled off, we get a better look at the vapor chamber which sits underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. Moving on, the vibrator motor is located on the bottom and it's held down with some adhesive. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker which is the Y sticker over here on the bottom. And there's another one over here on the frame which sits underneath the sim reader. The flex cable for the volume key is located here and that's also held down with some adhesive. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker which is located on top. For the repairability score, I give this one a 6 out of 10.
Now it's time to put the foam back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.